So we spent a little time talking about heat and work and uh, more recently figured out how to relate heat and work to internal energy and it turns out that uh, doing things under a constant volume conditions is quite convenient because the heat is the same thing as, as the internal energy regardless of whether we're talking about the differential amount of heat uh, and internal energy or a finite change in the internal energy or finite amount of heat. On the other hand, experimentally, it's more convenient usually to think about things in a constant pressure environment. If you want to do a, an experiment at constant volume, you've got to be very careful, have a rigid container, make sure it's fully sealed, make sure that it's uh, sturdy enough that the volume can't change. So it's a lot more difficult to do an experiment at constant volume. At constant pressure, on the other hand, this room is at one atmosphere of pressure, roughly. If I did a reaction in this room, if, if something expands, it just pushes some of the air out of the room and keeps the air uh, the whole environment at, at one atmosphere pressure. So it's, it's quite uh, convenient to do things at constant pressure rather than constant volume, but then we lose the advantage of not being able to, not uh, having to worry about uh, the PV work in a process. So that's the next step we can think about is, is we can define a quantity that has all the advantages of the internal energy at, in not having to think too hard about PV work when we do a process, but also the um, experimental advantages of being more convenient at constant pressure rather than constant volume. And the name for that uh, new quantity that we're going to define is called the enthalpy, something that quite possibly you've heard of in earlier chemistry classes. So we define, in fact I'll use a triple equal sign to say that for the very first time, uh, at least in this class, uh, I'm defining the enthalpy to be equal to the con quantity internal energy plus pressure times volume. So that's just a definition uh, we choose to use. With that definition, we can ask ourselves, what is the, the change in U or what is the differential change uh, in U? Uh, or in this case, what is the change in enthalpy? So if I take the differential of both sides of this equation, the differential change in my new quantity, the enthalpy. I should give this a name. dH on the left. On the right, I have du. And then the differential of P times V. I can use the product rule to write that as P dV plus V dP. So that's the differential of both the left and the right. But we know some things about the terms in this expression. du, we know from the first law, is equal to dq plus dw. I'll just leave the pdv and vdp in there. We also know, at least if the only type of work we're concerned with is PV work, we know how to write uh, down the differential change in work, dq. I can write as minus p external dv. I leave the rest of these terms unchanged. So now we've got two terms here, a minus PDV and a plus PDV, but the difference is this one is the external pressure and this one is the internal pressure, the system's pressure. We know that the external pressure and the internal pressure are the same as each other. P is equal to P external if we have a reversible process where the pressure and the external pressure remain equal to each other throughout that whole reversible process. So in that circumstance, P external and P are the same thing. This negative term cancels this positive term, and we're left with enthalpy is heat plus, uh, change in enthalpy is, change is the amount of heat plus VDP. And now we're at the point where uh, we can do what I promised at the beginning. If we're under constant pressure conditions, so that any change in the pressure is zero because the pressure is not changing, if dp is equal to zero because we're at constant pressure, that second term goes away. And what we're left with is the statement that the change in the enthalpy is equal to the change in, or the amount of heat transferred. So that's the equivalent of this statement that we've had earlier. Internal energy is equal to heat if we're under constant volume conditions. If we're under constant pressure conditions, this new quantity that we've defined uh, 
the enthalpy, the change in the enthalpy is equal to the amount of heat when we're at constant pressure. So we can write that either in differential form or if we prefer for our finite size changes in this enthalpy. So we've got completely analogous expressions to these two that we had for the internal energy, but now for the enthalpy. And really, if, if uh, you get confused about what's the difference between energy and enthalpy, all enthalpy is is a slightly tweaked version of the internal energy, the energy of a system, tweaked in such a way that when we do things under constant pressure conditions, the enthalpy is the same thing as the heat. That makes it a convenient quantity to use under constant pressure conditions because under those conditions, we don't have to worry too much about the, the PV work. We can ignore the, the work contribution, and it's only the heat that's related to this new quantity we've defined called the enthalpy. So we can use the enthalpy in an example. In fact, we'll do the same example we considered uh, previously. We'll talk about uh, heating of an ideal gas. So let's take exactly the same problem as in the prior video lecture. Let's say we've got one mole of an ideal gas at one atmosphere, and we're going to change it from condition one to condition two, but we're going to do it at constant pressure. So the initial pressure and the final pressure are both the same number. What we are going to do, though, is, is heat the gas up from room temperature 298 Kelvin, increase the temperature by 50 Kelvin to 348 Kelvin. So uh, that's the main thing we're doing is we're heating this gas up. When we do it at constant pressure, of course, the volume is going to change. Using PV equals nRT with these numbers will tell us that the initial volume has to be 24 and a half liters, at least if we're talking about an ideal gas. And the volume after we've heated it up, because the temperature's increased but the pressure hasn't changed, that volume is going to have increased. Again, PV equals nRT, as we considered previously, tells us the final volume of 28.6 liters. Okay. So that's the setup. The question then is, what is the enthalpy change for this process? And we can use the equations we've just determined. One very nice thing about the enthalpy, similar to what was nice about internal energy when we're comparing it to heat and work, heat and work are sometimes inconvenient because they're path-dependent processes. Enthalpy, because we've defined it using only state variables, energy, pressure, and volume, enthalpy is also a state variable. So I don't actually have to tell you whether what path I took to get from these initial conditions to these final co conditions. Doesn't matter whether it was a reversible path, irreversible path, what changed, what didn't change. Uh, the enthalpy change is just the enthalpy under conditions two minus the enthalpy under conditions one because enthalpy is a state variable. So initially, when the gas is under these conditions, we can calculate the enthalpy as U plus PV. So we need to know the energy of the gas and the pressure and the volume. For an ideal gas, at least one that we can treat like a 3D particle in a box, we've seen previously that enthalpy is 3 halves nRT. So we can plug numbers into this expression. We know moles, pressure, temperature, and volume. Uh, so the enthalpy of the gas before we've heated it up is 3 halves N, uh, which is 1 mole. Gas constant times the initial temperature, 298 Kelvin. To that, we need to add P times V. So I'm going to add initial pressure, 1 atmosphere. And multiplying by the initial volume, 24 and a half liters. All right, so that, that's numbers plugged into this expression. If I stop and look at units, however, moles will cancel moles and Kelvin will cancel Kelvin. 3 halves nRT gives me units of joules, which is fine because we're interested in something that behaves like an energy, a tweaked version of the energy. That's what the enthalpy is. The second term, the PV term, I've got liters times atmospheres. That's also an energy, but it's not in units of joules. So I need to convert 
from Joule, from liter atmospheres. Two units of joules in order to get rid of these slightly inconvenient units of liter atmospheres, convert them to joules, and then my final answer will be in units of joules. And when I do that calculation, 3 halves times 1 times gas constant 298 added to the second term, 24 and a half times this conversion factor, we find that the enthalpy of the gas under this initial set of conditions turns out to be 6,200 joules. 6.2 kilojoules, if you prefer, is the enthalpy of the gas under this set of conditions. So again, enthalpy is a state function all for a given uh, system under some uh, thermodynamic state. If I sp supply pressure, temperature, volume, we can calculate the enthalpy of the gas at that state. Likewise, we can calculate the enthalpy of the gas under the final state of the system, where I've increased the temperature and also increased the volume, but left the pressure the same. And I won't work through all the arithmetic again, but if we use the same expression, 3 adds nRT with the final temperature, and then P2 times V2, all that's going to change here is instead of multiplying by 298 Kelvin, I'm going to multiply by 348 Kelvin. And then instead of one atmosphere times 24 and a half liters for the PV term, I'm going to have one atmosphere times 28.6 liters for the PV term. So both of these terms have actually increased. If we do the arithmetic, what we find, you're welcome to double check and make sure you agree with this result, is that we get an enthalpy of 7,240 Kelvin. So the main thing we're interested in, the change in the enthalpy when we go from condition one, where we have 6,200 joules worth of enthalpy, to condition two, where we have 7,240 joules of enthalpy, the change in the enthalpy is a little over 1,000 joules, 1,040 joules, which, if you uh, recall the answer from the uh, previous example we did when we considered this exact same uh, heating uh, gas under constant pressure, turns out that the heat required to heat that gas at constant pressure was the same number, 1,040 joules, because as expected, the change in the enthalpy is equal to the heat under conditions of constant pressure. So we can notice a couple things about that. Number one, we didn't have to explicitly think about PV work. That was the, the promise I made when we defined the enthalpy, is we wouldn't have to uh, think about the heat and the work separately and add them together. Turns out we didn't actually save ourselves that much arithmetic because the PV work is really hiding in this, this P1, V1, and P2, V2, the difference between those two terms. Uh, but at least we were able to do the calculation without specifically having to ask ourselves about path-dependent functions like heat and work. And instead, we've now got a state function that we can use to calculate um, the change in enthalpy or, if we prefer, the amount of heat required to get from state one to state two. So that's, that's really the biggest advantage of the enthalpy is it's a state function and we don't have to burden ourselves with questions about path functions. One more thing that we can do with the enthalpy before we move on is because we've been talking about ideal gases in particular. If I go back to my definition of enthalpy as being energy plus P times V, just like we've seen here, If we have an ideal gas that behaves like a particle in a box, in other words, an ideal gas whose internal energy is 3 halves times nRT, then the enthalpy will be 3 halves nRT plus PV. One additional shortcut we can take that we didn't explicitly use here is if it's an ideal gas, PV is, of course, equal to nRT. So I've just used the ideal gas expression to rewrite PV as nRT. And then I've got 3 halves nRT plus an additional 1 nRT. So altogether, I've got 5 halves nRT. So there's an expression that we didn't use explicitly, but that we can put in a box and use uh, from this point on. If we have an ideal gas that behaves like a 3D particle in a box, then the enthalpy of that 
gas will be 5 halves nRT. So that's a, a comparable expression to the result we've had previously that gives us the internal energy of an ideal gas. Now we have an expression for the enthalpy of an ideal gas. So now that we know about enthalpy, what we can do is um, see uh, uh, what that tells us in particular about heat, because enthalpy is the same thing as heat when we do things at constant pressure. So we'll focus a little more carefully on heat in the next video lecture.